Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about a lot of things on this course. We talked about publishing, bulletproof business. We talked about effective video content. We talked about everything there is to know about the music business. And if you don't win big after watching this course, then I don't know what's going on with you. You might have to watch it again, right? But one thing we haven't touched on that we're gonna talk about right now in depth with someone that's been in the game for before I was even in the game. She was already a legend when I started. She was someone that I was like, man, I need to be friends with her because she knows what's going on. Uh, her name is Wendy Day. Uh, she's helped many rappers build their careers, uh, independent labels, independent artists, some of the artists that you know that went on to become famous rappers. She's helped them navigate their way to becoming a major artist and winning big. Uh, she's also the founder of Rap Coalition. Her name is Wendy Day, and she is also the Sugar Honey Ice Tea. Get familiar. <laughs> What's up, Wendy? I'm good, and I have my iced tea right here. <laughs> yeah, <sure you> do. <laughs> so, Wendy Day knows everything there is to know about starting an independent label, uh, about being an independent artist, what to look out for. Uh, uh, what to do, what not to do. So I felt it advantageous to have her on here for, for those of you that are aspiring artists that want to understand things like what is a 360 deal? It's a term we hear a lot in the music business. What does it mean to recoup? Uh, what does it really mean? Because I don't think a lot of people have been misinformed and misguided on what recouping really means. And I think once we talk to Wendy, you're going to be more enlightened about what it really means. I'm going to make it really clear. <laughs> and also, what are um, ancillary rights? What does that mean? So those are the three topics we're going to talk about today. And I need you guys to pay attention because these are the things that you need to know if you want to build your own independent label or if you want to even sign with the label. These are the things that you need to be mindful of mm -hmm. in deciding and negotiating what your deal is going to look like. You ready Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's, it's not, this isn't the most fun topic, but this is the topic that's going to impact you the most financially in terms of um, understanding the industry and signing to a label. So let's get right into it. Can I start with 360 deals? Clint? Yeah, let's start. So a lot of people hear the term 360 deal. I don't think a lot of people fully understand what that means. So why Absolutely. do you define what a 360 deal means? So a 360 deal is when you sign to a record label and they take a piece of each stream of your income. And to help you understand this better, let me just take a step back and tell you that the average record deal before 360 deals came into vogue was you would sign to a label, they would give you an advance of maybe a quarter million dollars, and then you would sign to like an 85-15 split where they collect 85% of the money and you as an artist get 15% of the money. Well, when the music industry um, went from analog to digital, what happened was the record label started to lose a lot of money. And because they were losing money, they said, okay, we need to find a way to up our revenue. And they decided that instead of just doing 85-15 splits, on the royalty structure that they would take a percentage of all income. So therefore, when you sign to a label through a 360 deal, they're taking a piece of your touring money. They're taking a piece of your, um, if you write a book or if you appear in a movie, they take a percentage of that. If you um, go on tour, they're taking a piece of that. Merch. You're publishing, they're taking a piece of that. Um, your merchandising, if you put out a t-shirt with your name on it, they get a percentage of that. And my dislike, and I have to admit to you up front, I have a bias against 360 deals because my experience is that most record labels don't do the necessary work to get you onto a tour or help you get a publishing deal or help you um, get a book deal or a film deal. So I have a little bit of a problem with them taking a percentage of that income when they're not really helping you to earn that money. So a 360 deal is, um, and I'm just going to give you the best example that I can, is when, let's say you're signing to Atlantic Records, for example, and it can be any major label, but let's just say it's Atlantic Records. They may do that same 85-15 split with you, but they're going to want 10% of all of your show money up to maybe 30% of all of your show money. It depends on how much leverage you have when you're negotiating your deal. 
they may see that you have the potential to do a sponsorship deal. Maybe a liquor company would want to, you know, partner with you and do a deal. So the label would then say, okay, we want somewhere between 30% and 50% of the income that you get from that endorsement deal. But they're not actually out there helping you get endorsement deals. Their philosophy is they're making you famous and they're building your career to the point where others may want to do a deal with you. So therefore they should share in all the income. And my response to that is I wouldn't have a problem with you eating what you kill. So if you bring to something to the table, you should absolutely get a percentage of it. But in the case of most labels, in my experience, they sign you and they kind of sit back and do this. Mm -hmm. and they wait for you to blow up and then they're just stepping in to take pieces of the income so that they can make more money than they would normally now, and i have a problem with as, that as an artist when you're negotiating can you carve those out yes contract yes you just need to have a lot of leverage so as an artist it's really important to put out your music and start building your fan base before you even start talking to labels. Because if, if I'm an artist, let's say I'm a rapper, and that's a really scary thought because I suck. But let's just say I'm a rapper and I put my music out and I'm streaming millions of streams and I'm doing shows for anywhere from $3,000 to $7,000 a show. When a label steps to me, they're gonna look at the fact that I'm already earning you know, close to a million dollars a year. So the offers to sign me are gonna start at two or $3 million. They're gonna have more money to offer because they see that I can do this on my own. And then on my side of it, my value is I'm, I'm reducing the risk that they're taking by signing me because I'm already showing them that I've got a following of fans. There's already people that like my music and like my image enough to really support me and vote for me with their dollars. Right, so what about an artist that isn't fortunate enough to already have a massive fan base and have the leverage where they can negotiate carve outs? What about an artist that's just starting to get some buzz, people are talking about them, there's an A&R or some a label rep that recognizes them and wants to offer them a deal? Now, a lot of artists, and you and I both know, a lot of artists will look at that like, yo, this is my shot. Yeah. Like, I don't want to miss this one time. Right. Someone's interested in me, and this may never come again. Now, this goes back to believing in yourself and building your own team and understanding what you're going to learn in my book and the course to be able to do it on your own. But a lot of people still feel like they don't have the skill, they don't have the money, they don't have the connections, they don't have the experience or the intelligence to actually build their own company on their own. So they figure, well, let me just do what I do and rap or sing or whatever I do and they can handle all the business. What do you say to that artist? I say, you've got you've to know, you've got to learn the business because if you don't, yes, you have to trust your team and I'm certainly not taking away from that, but you've also got to understand how all this works so that when they're advising you, you have some understanding as to whether they're telling you the best thing to do for yourself or not. You know, I, I always tell artists that building a su successful career is the goal. Getting a record deal is not the goal. Right. Getting a record deal is just one of the lanes that you use to get to success. Right. Success is really the goal, right? right. So if, if you're going to be successful, you have to learn how to get there. You have to choose along with your team what the path is going to be. You can't just like jump in the car and ride shotgun right. to get there. You really need to have some input and some understanding of A, how to get there, B, what it's going to take to get there, and C, how to pivot if what you're doing isn't working. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just very passive in this, it's going to eat you alive. Right. Like the stress would be incredible if you did this not knowing and blindly and 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 many people do that so i don't want to imply that that never happens because it does but if you can remove the risk from a label as to why they should work with you you're in a golden position that's right. called leverage anytime you're negotiating anything in this world you need to have leverage you need to be able to have 
something that somebody wants. And, you know, there's so many creative artists in this industry and I don't want to take away from what anybody's doing, but you got to kind of look at this from the perspective of a label. This is a business. They're not signing you because you're the best rapper or the greatest singer, or you have the greatest image. That's not why they're, that's not why they want to work with you. They want to work with you because you're bringing something to the table that's going to bring financial return to them. So they want as little risk going in as possible so that they can get the most money out of this. And they're willing to pay more for that. Mm -hmm. If, if the average deal is 250 or $300,000 and you've got leverage, they would happily spend 500,000, 600,000, a million dollars because it's reducing the risk that they're taking by signing you. And I realized that everybody watching this is thinking I'm not a risk. I am the dopest at what I do. I'm going to make you a billion dollars. <laughs> but the reality is, yeah. this is a business. Right. And there's talent is the easiest part to find in all of this. You're right. going to find talent everywhere. There's, there's one in a million that can go all the way to the top. Right. But the reality is, you can find talent very easily. You can find people that are going to make you money. And that's really, as a business, what record labels are looking for. Right. Now, you keep mentioning the word business. Absolutely. Uh, and you said that you're not a fan of 360 deals. I'm so not. So do you um, find fault with a label or the theory of, I'm making you famous, therefore I should participate? Do you disagree with that? I, I don't. I totally get it. What I disagree with is that they say they're going to help you in all of those areas to increase the stream of income. And most of the time they don't. Yeah. It, it's sort of like the old, oh, the check is in the mail. It, yeah. It's it, If they really did what they said they were going to do, I have no problem with it. Most of the clients that I have, Clinton, for building independent labels have investors. Mm -hmm. And the investors are all tied to these artists through 360 deals. So they're doing splits with them on all streams of income. Right. The difference is they're actually helping them increase all of those streams of income. So they're sharing in areas where they're bringing something to the table. Wouldn't and I have no say, problem with that. Wouldn't it be fair to say though, say I'm a record label and I want to sign you Wendy because you're the hottest rapper, right? Right. And I'm like, okay. yo, it's my money. I don't have to lift a finger. I did my lifting by making all this money that I was able to infuse into your career to allow you to do what you need to do with my resources to build up your brand. So if I therefore make you famous by my money and my resources, I should participate in all the other things that are going to come because of me making you famous with my money. And my but, then, but then use your resources, use your money. Don't, don't shelve me because you sign somebody that you found after you found me and you think that they're a little bit more marketable, like actually put effort into me as an artist and get me to that next level. Actually do what you say you're going to do. Right. Not that you would ever do that Clinton, because I, I know that you are an artist advocate, but a lot of labels are not. So it's not like when they sign you, they think you're the next hot thing smoking. Mm -hmm. They sign you because they believe they can get you to the point where they can make income right. and they may sign another artist directly after you or the artist they signed right before you might start to pop off. So yeah. they, they jump out of your lane and into that lane and push that person. Right. They're going to push whoever is the moving train. Right. That's who they're going to push. They're going to push the easiest artist, the one that has the team that listens or right. the one that has the team that's easy to work with or, more often than not, the one that has the team that's doing all the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, they should absolutely share in the income because they've got the infrastructure and the funding, but they also have to do the work, some of the work. The artist still does the work. I don't want to imply artists just sit back and do right. nothing, right? They really have to get up and work for their own careers, but so does the label. The label's bringing more than just infrastructure and money. They're bringing know-how and they're bringing opportunity. So they have to step in and actually apply that know-how and apply that opportunity. Right. So I'm speaking in these videos, I'm speaking to everybody. So it could be the sure. artist trying to sign a label or it could be the guy that wants to start his independent label. 
That's why I'm asking from that perspective as well. If I'm the guy that worked really hard to make all this money and I have some connections, look, I may not know a lot about the music industry. I just know I want to get into it. I just right. know I love music. I just think you're talented. I want to put my money into it. I got all the money. You got all the talent. Let's go in here. So some I, of I love that. And and let's 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 say let's say you wanted to start Clinton Sparks Records, and I love that. And this is not a great example because you're actually really knowledgeable. But let's say you weren't. Let's say that you had money and you had a brand and you decided you wanted to start a label, it's not really fair for you just to sign somebody and then say, okay, I don't know what to do next. That's a human being. That's a life that, that you're controlling, right? Mm -hmm. So as Clinton Sparks Records, you're going to be savvy enough to say, you know what, let me go find somebody that actually helps build record labels. Let me go find a Wendy Day, or let me go find somebody that's out there that can do this, mm -hmm. and I'll pay them to show me the way, but I'm gonna learn from them so that when I sign my second and third and fourth artists, I can do this myself. Right. It's, or, it's not really fair to just randomly sign somebody. Right. Or I was misled by the artist who said he has a strong team that knows how to do everything, they just need the money. You know what I mean? And I, so I give them the money, you told me you guys already got it. You know how to get the streaming. You know how to do all these things. You've got connections over here. You're doing shows. What if they don't? Huh? What if they don't? No, no. What if sure. they say that, but they don't? For sure. And that's what I'm saying. There's so many scenarios that really at the end of the day, it's just like, let's, the reason I'm bringing all this up is so somebody watching can see different experiences and different yes, all the components that you're not prepared for. Right? Exactly. You and I have seen so many things. Like someone sits on my couch and talks to me within five minutes. I know every single angle. That right. they know. You know what I'm saying? So like, yes. like, no, it's not a matter of like who's smarter. It's really just experience and how you soak that and exactly. absorb that experience, right? And then make it work. Exactly. So do, what, I, do I have a, do I have a minute to go off on that tangent? Yes. Because you made a really important point, and I think we can save people a lot of money and a lot of time here. Yeah. When, when you want to get into the music business and you haven't done it yet, you, you kind of come to it as a fan. We all did. I did. You did. Everybody does. We love the music. And it's not quite as easy as it looks. So sometimes when folks start a label, they say, oh, I like videos. I'll shoot a video for my artist. And they put out the video and it moves the needle a little bit and then it goes back down. And then they say, well, let me go ask around to my circle of friends and find out what to do next. And they hear people talking about publicists. So they say, oh, I'll hire a publicist. So they hire a publicist. The publicist struggles a little bit. They move the needle a little bit more. And then it goes right back down when they're done. So they say, well, that didn't work. Let me find something else. Oh, marketing? I should buy Facebook ads? Okay. And they go on their computer and they do a course on Facebook ads or they hire somebody to do, to do digital ads. And it starts to move the needle a little bit as they're, as they're promoting their music. And then it goes back down as soon as they stop. It's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's that they're not doing it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. If As somebody that consults record labels, it's my job to make sure that every, everything hits at the same time. Oh. It's sort of like if I have you to my house for dinner and you walk in the door and I hand you a dinner roll and then an hour later I hand you some vegetable and then 20 minutes later I hand you a, a piece of pie and then three seconds later I give you a steak. Aside from the fact that you'll clown me for serving you the worst dinner ever, it wasn't a successful meal because it didn't all hit in the right order or at the right time. Mm -hmm. It's just like preparing a meal. You can't do things sporadically. You've got to have some planning. You've got to figure out what the date is that you're going to release everything and then count back. Because if you're, if you're the type of artist that needs radio play, it's going to take you 12 to 16 weeks to get popping at radio. Mm -hmm. But if you're the type of artist that wants to build a TikTok campaign, you can start popping at TikTok within two weeks or two hours really, depending on the song. Yeah. So if you want everything to hit at once, you've got to actually count backwards and figure out when you want everything to hit. And okay. as a record label, that's your job. It's, it's, it's more than money, it's more than connections, it's your job to know that. So if you don't know that, you need to bring somebody on board that can help you do that. Right, and that's one of the things I think a lot of artists um, are, are not mindful of, they think, um, you know, if I go get a million streams on Spotify, I'm popping, or just that, or right. if I go get a bunch of views on YouTube, or if I get my video on Revolt or or MTV or you know one of these types of things. They don't understand. It's it's what you were saying with the meal. Even when you're cooking the meal, you have to time everything so it's done at you the same to. time. 
so that it's ready. exactly. You're not going to have a steak exactly. that's getting cold while you're making the potatoes. So, exactly. So it's the or the potatoes thing. are hard because you didn't cook them enough. Right. So it, you have to line everything up. You have to have a plan. You have yeah. to have a plan. I can't stress yeah. it enough. I say it in my book. I tell yeah. you, of course, you need a plan. You need to make out the whole rollout of your plan and stick to it. Yeah. If something's not working, you have to be able to know how to pivot. You if have to tweak it. Working, yes. You need to know and be prepared to capitalize on something when it does work. Exactly. So, there's another important um, thing that I think that a lot of people are not familiar with is that when they do sign a record label, they may be used to deciding what single they want to put out, what video they want to shoot, when they want to put the video out, how they're going to do shows, what kind of merch they want to put out, what they're going to... What yeah, they that's over. understand that your decisions <laughs> end when you sign, especially to a major record label. Maybe yeah. an independent label may be a little bit more flexible, but a major label definitely, like, you have no say anymore. They tell you what's going to happen. Unless, again, like Wendy <laughs> said, you came with, with massive and leverage, leverage in your agreement says this is how our decisions will be made. So exactly. you do have the right, you do have the ability to make a deal and negotiate things like that. And these are things that a lot of people don't understand. They're just worried about negotiating the money. Everyone's just like the bag. How do I get more money? Right? So it's like, but no, you need decision making power. You need, there's a lot of yeah. things you need to be mindful of. And that goes into the bulletproof business that I talked to you about in some of the other videos. Absolutely. And Clinton, they also have to be aware that, um, you know, like right now I'm in Atlanta and a lot of artists think, oh, um, this label just signed somebody from Atlanta. So all of a sudden Atlanta's hot. So I'm in Atlanta. So I'm going to get on. I'm the next to blow here. And labels don't look at it that way. It's not geographical to them. They don't, they don't wake up one day and say, gee, we don't have anybody from Boston or Idaho. Go find me an artist from Boston. Go mm -hmm. find me an, an artist from Boise. It, it doesn't work that way. They're looking at all of the artists across the country and they're seeing who's got a buzz. So you may be in Atlanta, but they're comparing you to somebody that's in Houston, somebody that's in uh, Los Angeles, somebody that could be anywhere, maybe Chicago, maybe maybe Boise, Idaho, I don't know. But they're they're not looking for somebody in a certain region or a certain area. They're looking for somebody that can make them money. So you're not competing with just people that are in Atlanta where you are if you're in Atlanta. You're competing with people all across the country. So it's really important to know who your competition is. And if, you're, if they're looking to sign you, who else are they looking to sign? And what, are, what kind of numbers and image does that artist have? What's your advantage compared to that person? What can you offer that will make them a better opportunity or more money than you you know right. learn who your competition is and that's not so easy and that's key because I, I say that you know people compare the wrong things a lot in my book and you may just compare yourself to let's just say you and this other person's equally as good singer right right but they're getting more traction than you are more momentum more attention right. you're like man like I'm just as good if not better like in your mind you're comparing the wrong things you're not seeing all the other things that they're doing that you're not doing. Yes. And that's what you learn in this book. Yes. Like, of course, is there's a lot of other things that go into play to success. So many other team. things that come like into Wendy play. Like Wendy said, there's a million great rappers, there's a million great singers, yes. there's a million great producers and DJs. There's millions of them. I just go pick somebody. You know yes. what I mean? Like, what do they have that's different that separates them, that makes them stand yes. out? Is it their work ethic? Is it their connections? Is it like some, their knowledge? Is it their team? Out? Yeah, this is their team. Is it their team? You know, I, I, I worked with an independent artist, got him to the point where he was making a million dollars a year independently. Interscope stepped in and signed him, and he chose a manager that was just butting heads with the label at all times. Mm -hmm. And after about six months, the labels threw up their hands and said, we're done. We can't, you know, we can't work with this guy. He's not you know, he's not, he doesn't understand the music industry and he's not easy to work with. So yeah. you've got to also have a team of people that can work with the label, not, not people that'll roll over, but people that actually understand the business and understand how this works. So if you're an artist and you're taking this, this course and you're reading this book, you also need to have your team take yeah. this course and read this book because you could be doing everything right, Clinton, as an artist, 
and you can sign to a label and the label cannot deal with your manager and they can't say to you, Clinton, we love you, but your manager's a jerk. So we're going to shelve you until you get a new manager. Times, They're just going to shelve you. How many times have we both seen that? Yeah. All day, every day. And I'll tell you where, where a lot of that happens. When you're starting off, and we talk about this in another video about finding your right team and making sure you have the right people on your team. But, you know, and I want to stick to the 360, but real quick, um, so many times people will just get their homie or their friend or their- Yes, parents, because they trust them. Or their parent to manage them. Yes. They don't have any experience, but you're just looking at it like, well, I trust them. They love me. They got my back. But that and doesn't that can mean- kill your career. Doing, or they're going to be best for your career, or they're going to help elevate yes. your career. In fact, they could be the reason your career ends. So Almost that's always. Why it's, that's why it's really important for you to learn. And like Wendy just said, which is a good point, I don't even think about this, if not only should you take a course like this, but you should, it should be mandatory that people your whole on the team. team read a book and watch a course like this so they totally fully understand you know, the pitfalls and all the things that they need to look out for and yes. how, to be a better, how to be better at what their job is, whatever their job is within the music business. Exactly. Because labels don't mind adversarial, they mind idiots. <laughs> yeah. No, they love someone that's going to be communicative, someone that's like always respond. Being responsive is very important. Yes. Um, Professional. Easy to work with. You, as an artist, if you've got a manager that the label loves and says, oh man, I love working with him, they're going to help you a lot more. Guess what? When a show comes in from a radio station, when an opportunity comes in, they're going to be like, ah, let's not give it to him. His manager's a dick. Let's give it to him because he's yes. great. And his manager's awesome at the yes. end. And that doesn't mean that your manager has to roll over and sell you out. That's not what we're saying. No. We're saying be professional. And you can disagree with somebody professionally. You can, you can have a manager that says to a label, I really don't want my artist to do that, and here's why. And as long as they can communicate effectively, right. the label's going to respect that. What they don't respect is being ignored or being told no with no reason oh. or the the manager saying no we're not going to do it your way we're going to do it our way and they don't respect that like they they're really good at what they do right. they just want to know that you're going to try and you're going to make effort right so i think we veered off 360 a little bit sorry so let's bring it back in let's bring it back in uh -huh. so yeah so 360 deal just so we can conclude it so people understand they're clear what a 360 deal is when a label signs you whether it's an independent or a major label whether it's a, a production company or somebody, anyone that wants to sign you and they say a 360 deal, what it means is they participate in every stream of income that comes in from you. Even if right now you're not an actor, but under my agreement, you become an actor and get a movie role, I am now going to eat off of you being an actor. If you write a book, if you put out merch, if you do something different than just making a record and putting it out, right. anything, you make anything, open, you could open a pizza shop. I get a percentage. If you're under my agreement right now, any business you open, you get an endorsement deal, someone gives you equity in a company, I'm eating off of that. So you need to be mindful of a 360 deal. And some of the stuff is okay. Some of the right. things make sense for what they're doing. But if you're going to open a pizza shop three years from now with your dad, because he loves making pizzas, you don't want to have to give you this, this exactly that, 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 that helped you record records, you know, some of your dad's restaurant. You know what I'm saying? And that's real. That's real. That's we real. both see that. So that's real. What a 360 deal is. Exactly. Now, there's a couple other things that you're really smart at that I want to extract that information from you to share with these people. I'm happy to do it. And uh, we didn't. This wasn't on our on our on our on our roster of things to talk to, but I think it's important. And since you're a master at it, it's something we should discuss. And what that is is how to start your own independent record label successfully. Absolutely. We'll talk about that in the next video. Get familiar.